A hacker apparently paid a company called Sakari $16 to reroute a reporter's text messages and then use SMS two-factor authentication to break into that reporter's various accounts. Let me be clear, this is not SIM jacking. Today I learned you can just pay a company to reroute someone else's texts. Quoting Motherboard. This overlooked attack vector shows not only how unregulated commercial SMS tools are, but also how there are gaping holes in our telecommunications infrastructure with a hacker sometimes just having to pinky swear they have the consent of the target. Quote, welcome to create an account if you want to mess with it. Literally anyone can sign up. Lucky225, the pseudonymous hacker who carried out the attack, told Motherboard, describing how easy it is to gain access to the tools necessary to seize phone numbers. Fortunately, Lucky225 was taking over my number number and breaking into the connected accounts with my permission to demonstrate the flaw. This also doesn't rely on SS7 exploitation, where more sophisticated attackers tap into the telecom industry's backbone to intercept messages on the fly. What Lucky225 did with Sakari is easier to pull off and requires less technical skill or knowledge. Unlike SIM jacking, where a victim loses cell service entirely, my phone seemed normal except I never received the messages intended for me, but he did. Once the hacker is able to reroute a target's text messages, it can be trivial to hack into other accounts associated with that phone number. In this case, the hacker sent login requests to Bumble, WhatsApp, and Postmates, and easily accessed the accounts, end quote. How is this possible, you might ask? I encourage you to read the entire piece for a first-person account of how this went down. But in a world where SMS sign-up or authentication or login is more common than ever, this seems especially problematic, quoting again. As for how Sakari has this capability to transfer phone numbers, Noel from Security Research Labs said, quote, There is no standard global protocol for forwarding text messages to third parties. So these attacks would rely on individual agreements with telcos or SMS hubs, end quote. In Sakari's case, it receives the capability to control the rerouting of text messages from another firm called Bandwidth, according to a copy of Sakari's LOA obtained by Motherboard. Bandwidth told Motherboard that it helps manage number assignment and traffic routing through its relationship with another company called NetNumber. NetNumber owns and operates the proprietary centralized database that the industry uses for text message routing, the Override Service Registry, OSR, Bandwidth said. The flow of the capability to reroute text messages is similar in some ways to the cell phone location data market where telecommunications giants such as T-Mobile, AT&T, and Sprint sold access to their customers' location data to a series of aggregators who then in turn resold that access to other companies. And along with that transfer of the location data access, each company also pushed the need to obtain consent down to the company below it, resulting in wide room for abuse. In 2019, Motherboard reported on how we paid a bounty hunter source $300 to gain the location of a phone to demonstrate the issue, with the target phone not receiving any sort of text message or voice call to confirm they had provided consent to be tracked. Verizon introduced its own consent mechanism, where it forced at the carrier level a targeted phone to receive a text message to confirm the owner consented to sharing their location data. That practice of delegating the need to obtain consent to other companies also applies to this latest issue of text messaging routing. In this case, Sakari asked Lucky225 to sign an LOA to confirm they had the authority to take control of Motherboard's phone number. But at the time, Sakari did not send any sort of message to the target number to confirm whether the user consented to the transfer. Bandwidth said it was the responsibility of the retail service provider, which in this case was Sakari, to obtain consent. Quote, while text message forwarding might have legitimate applications for business, the particular implementation underpinning this attack is appallingly weak in security and data privacy. Telcos have different ways of authenticating their customers, obviously including text messaging. The fact that none of these authentication methods are used in this case to get consent from the owner of a forwarded phone number is shocking, Noel added, end quote. Yeah, again, to sum up what happened here, just to underline how insane this is, you can right now pay a company less than 20 bucks, have someone else's text messages forwarded to you, and all you have to do is sign a letter, basically pinky swear saying you have consent to to receive these messages, and these companies don't do anything to verify that consent with the original end user. That seems pretty, pretty terrible to me.